Today is our planting day. We're really excited, except for it's not really a planting day. It's going to be more so like a planting couple of weeks. We're going to start planting probably peppers today, green beans, squash, all sorts of stuff, and just kind of work our way through the list of all the things we need to get out into this garden. Continue watching if you'd like to see our progress. We got a big job ahead of us. We are going to be planting our garden. This garden is a uh, everything kind of mixed bag garden. We're going to have peppers in here, potatoes, carrots, beets, onions, green beans, eggplant, everything you can think of pretty much. We have a different space that's going to be a dedicated tomato garden. Today we are focusing on this. This is our original. We have the lines laid out, the poly lines for drip irrigation. We're about a week ahead of schedule this year because we got blessed with a little bit of warm weather and not freezing nights. So we're about a week ahead of time. So fingers crossed that this warm weather continues. The first thing we had to do was get this space prepped. This took a week or two to get everything to this point. Once the rows were hilled, we placed the drip irrigation lines. And having two people to do this job really does help a lot so that both people can grab opposite ends of the poly pipe. We have different emitter spacings or drip points where the water comes out of the various lines. So this part takes us a little while to figure out exactly where we want everything. We like to space out our rows to accommodate different crops in different rows. We try not to overcrowd areas and we try to think of what makes sense for plant placement. For example, we place vining plants near the edges of the garden and plan to have them bind off to the side. So we want a poly pipe with the correct spacings of drip points to meet this need. This is our source water line right here, and we pull this all these runs off in the fall, and they just go off to the side. And then in the spring, you just lay the source water line down and get your rows laid out, and then you just plug your rows back in. And the tape labels kind of give it give you an idea if it's tight spacing or further apart spacing for big plants, because we used to plant tomatoes in here and if you wouldn't want a tomato row next to another tomato row because you could hardly walk down the rows. Um, so we know that this is spaced out a little further apart because of the orange tape. All right to get the garden lines all flushed out all we do is plug one of them in. See that one right there? He's on the other end down there and we turn on our timer until the water gets all the way down there. All right you good? Yep. Turn it off, and he's going to cap that end now. His chickens are being noisy in the background. If we decide to plant something and there is no dripper already there, we just add an extra dripper, and it's really easy. We place a drip point at the base of each plant, but this excludes certain veggies like carrots, onions, kohlrabi, beets, and so on. For those, we use a quarter inch drip line tubing, but when we need to punch an extra emitter, it's a pretty slick and easy process. We use a poly pipe hole punch to punch a hole in the poly tube. We push in an emitter, and we like to use one gallon per hour drippers in this garden. All right, now finally on to getting some plants into the garden. We start all of our plants inside our house or in the greenhouse when things get warm enough, and it's time to get the greenhouse going. If it's not started in our greenhouse or in our house, then we direct seed it outside. It is definitely quite the shuffle getting everything moved out into the garden, but we are definitely glad that we finally decided to buy a greenhouse as it's made our gardening experience so much more enjoyable and rewarding. We're getting ready to plant our potatoes this afternoon. We have a couple different varieties we're putting in. One of them is a variety of red potato that we've been planting for a couple of years now. We plant enough to eat on it all winter and then we save enough for seed to reseed the garden. We haven't had any issues doing that yet, but the way we do it is you get your potatoes out and you find the eyes and depending on the potatoes and where the eyes are growing, the eyes are the roots that are coming out right here. This is an eye that's kind of overgrown. This is an eye. But um, anyway, here's another small eye that's not so overgrown. So you cut this potato in half and you put two halves in each pod just to get more growth going. That's worked well for us. We plant our potatoes relatively deep, probably eight inches or so deep. And 
give them give them a week or something and they'll they'll start popping up vegetation put a nice big crown on and then they'll put a bunch of nice big uh tubers in the ground for you to dig up in the fall our seed potatoes will get overgrown some years where the eyes start growing out sometimes will come out over the side of our tubs and stuff they're i mean they don't look like any seed potato you buy but we put them in the ground and they work just fine we haven't found that that makes any difference as far as what kind of potatoes we get in the fall we still get nice crops of potatoes so don't let that discourage you if your potatoes are starting to get overgrown stick them in the ground they should do fine okay i'm going to do reds down this row i guess so if you are short on seed and you want to stretch your seed potato out a little more you can take and cut your eyes apart you can see there's an eye here there is an eye here there's an eye here so by cutting this one in half you kind of up your odds and getting more growth out of it so this should create a this should start shooting out some growth this one obviously will this one will here's another eye right here and put the cut side down put them at the bottom of your hole cover them up and you're off to the races on to the next one that's a way to stretch your your seed potatoes out a little more if you need to all right now we're on to eggplant these were started back in march and these ones were started in april we're going to pop these in the ground i believe we have seven different varieties of eggplant and to get these in the ground well first we just pop them out of the cup look how ready they are to get in there and then i already dug my little hole here we're just going to get them right underneath the little emitter and we'll get these all planted in i'm going to keep track of the variety name the same way i do with a lot of our other plants with those cups and let's get the row planted This is an example of us getting the quarter inch drip line tubing set up to plant carrots and onions. We try to make sure that emitter points are staggered and double or triple, sometimes even quadruple up the drip lines so that we can get good water coverage on the plants. Today is June 10th and we are planting, transplanting some green beans from the greenhouse into the garden. We decided to germinate these in the greenhouse to hopefully get more germination. We are starting some new varieties this year. So we have three new varieties this year that we're trying out in our garden, but really only two of the varieties germinated well, so I'll show you those here in a minute. These over here are the dragon tongue and they germinated really awesome. Only have a couple pods that are missing on that one. These over here are Fortex and they did okay as far as germination goes. Not the best, but at least we have something. These over here are Seychelle and they did not germinate very well at all. We only have, if you want to count all three, all four of those, four little plants to try. So at least it's something to try for this year for that variety. Otherwise, we have been growing green beans that were direct sown into the garden that are a bush bean variety. And we actually got them from a neighbor and we really still enjoy them. So we make sure to save their seed every year. Okay, let's get these green beans planted today. These are our bush beans that we direct sowed into the garden and they're looking awesome.
We decided to splurge this year and set up cattle panel arches for our vining plants this year. I am really excited about this addition. We used T-posts to hold the panels and tried using zip ties to secure the panels to the T-post, but this really wasn't working out for us. So we drilled a hole in each T-post and used wire to secure the arched panel to the T-post. Today is June 11th and we are finally transplanting our sweet potato starts into the garden. We're really excited. So we know we have two different varieties. We think they are Japanese red and Jersey yellow. And then I decided to buy some sweet potato starts and those are Beauregard. But when they came to us, they did not look like they were even alive practically. So I'll show a picture here of what they look like today. Those have started to root in water and now they are in the greenhouse in soil and hopefully they start to grow. A couple of them have some leaves. So that's the point that they are at today. But these ones are super ready to get popped into the ground. You can see just how ready they are to get into the ground. So remember those arched cattle panels I was so excited about for the vining plants this year? I definitely had a mess up and thought that the dragon tongue beans were a vining variety, but they are not. They are a bush bean. So we moved all of those beans to a different spot and saved their original spot for cucumbers that will vine. We moved some sweet potato slips under the arch to try to get them to grow up onto the arched cattle panels. Yep, you're reading and seeing this right. We got a little frost on June 22nd. This reminder really makes us glad that we decided to wait so long to get everything planted this year. Now we can finally get everything else into the ground. These cucumbers are definitely ready to get planted. These went in the ground pretty slick, although we were a little worried about their size and the fragile-ness of their vines, but it ended up working out okay. Now the arch trellis will have a lot better chance of serving its purpose with vining cucumbers planted at its base. And we were able to get our last few eggplants into the garden before it got dark. We are on to our last few plants getting into the ground today. We planted a little zucchini, white scalp squash, swiss chard, kale, and a couple other things. The greenhouse is looking a lot more empty and the garden is looking nice and full. Well, it is finally all planted. It is June 24th today, and we finally have the garden all planted, which it's kind of crazy. This is for sure the longest it's ever taken us to plant our garden, but there's a couple of reasons for that this year. We're trying to expand into more of a market garden and turn it into more of a business instead of just a hobby. And so we have expanded our gardens quite a bit. Yep, so we have a a garden with just tomatoes in it. There are 231 tomato plants out there. And then we have two corn patches this year. and Two different varieties and it's about, it should be about 4,000 corn plants. Yeah, so, and that's all been hand planted. We don't have a planter or anything. So um, we're just kind of making do with what we have. So this garden is finally all planted. And part of our reason for um, it taking so long, well, for one is because we've been busy. We have a lot of stuff that we've been planting. And the second reason is really the weather. We have some things that we're trying out this year, um, like the sweet potatoes. We know that those need really warm weather. And as you can see in this video, we just experienced a little frost on the day after the summer solstice. So really late in the year, we experienced a frost, which is kind of crazy. Um, and then we've also, this is kind of a little confession of ours. We have not had success growing cucumbers before, and we're trying a new method with that, which is not putting our cucumber plants out here until it's really warm out. So they're finally in the ground. They are on these trellises behind us, which we decided to splurge and get those this year. I'm really excited about those. That's going to hopefully look pretty cool. Fingers crossed. As you can see, a lot of the other stuff is kind of popping off in the garden and starting to really go. Our potatoes are looking awesome. Those have been in the ground for a long time at this point. Our peppers have been in the ground, an eggplant, a bunch of them, a bunch of stuff, a bunch of stuff we direct seeded that's not in the video shown. Um, it's starting to go. So it's really exciting. We're, we're getting to the, the fun part of the gardening season. It's supposed to warm up here and get hot and dry like it normally is in Montana in the summer. Mm -hmm. That usually gets things growing for us at least because with our drip irrigation, we can keep water on them. 
So this garden will look a bit interesting for us this year, being that it is not going to have any tomatoes. Tomatoes have typically been our, our big thing that we really focus on. It's the thing we I definitely enjoy growing the most. Last year we grew over 100 tomatoes in this garden space here, and this year we totally removed them from here and put them out in their own dedicated space. So this garden will look really interesting this year for us from our perspective because normally we've had tomatoes in here, a um, hundred plants or maybe even a little bit more than that. So it's going to look really different without all those extra plants, tomato plants in here because those do end up taking up quite a bit of space. So we had a lot of room for some new stuff. So one of the other things that we put in this garden is we've ground cherries that pop up every year and we transplant them. When they pop up we transplant them into other parts of the garden and then we also do let some of them kind of grow wherever they wherever they land and um, that's something that's a little bit different in our garden. Usually the ones that you let come up on their own do a little better than the ones you transplant but this year we put some in the greenhouse for a couple weeks to try to get them really going. They've been kind of a hit at the farmers market because people have never seen them before and they are very tasty. <laughs> Yep, but it is a weed, so if you plan on planting those, they yeah, will just keep they'll coming back. They'll keep coming back in your garden no matter what you do. It seems that way anyways. Yeah, yeah so be careful if you plant those. We have a lot of green beans planted this year, hoping to have an early crop of those to start selling stuff earlier than we normally do. We are considering the garden fully planted at this point, although we do have some successive planting that we're going to be doing with some extra cucumber starts and some extra other things that we've started in our greenhouse and some extra stuff we're going to direct seed out here like carrots and things like that. So for the most part it's mostly planted um, but there are little things we're going to add here and there. Well thanks so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed watching us get our garden planted please like this video and please subscribe to our channel to follow our journey to see how this grows and what kind of crops, what kind of produce we end up getting at the end of the season. should happen pretty quick. Our season wraps up around early September so next couple months is where it all happens. Yep so with a short growing season here we just try to see what we can get in that amount of time. Mm -hmm.